as, as, as much as ever before. And you know we've come together as a state over the years, but as much now as we have ever done, we need to be speaking with one voice at the national level. We need to engage the administration. We need to participate in the regulatory process. And we need to work harder than ever so that our views, which Alaska's views, prevail. So in many, many ways, state-led advocacy is as important now as ever. The steps that we have, have taken to, to gain reasonable access to our lands and our waters, this is one of the, the great stories from last year. And as we see them through, these efforts, I think, will, will work to not only protect lives, create jobs, refill taps, diversify our economy, but also help ease the budget deficits as the years go on. But we recognize that there's other resource issues that we face as Alaskans. One is right here in the Tongass, our largest national forest. Reasonable access has, has a direct impact on economic stability. And we know that whether you're in the Tongass or whether you're in the interior. So over the next couple days, I'm going to be going down to, to your area, Representative Ortiz. I'll be hosting the Chief of the Forest Service, uh, Tony Took. We'll be down in Ketchikan. We'll be on Prince of Wales Island, you know, I guess, weather permitting. We're going to get there. We're going to be optimistic about it. But I think it's important for him to see firsthand how federal restrictions, including the roadless rule, are holding us back, holding us back on timber, on mining, on renewable energy development. I believe, I believe that there is both room and need for all of those alongside tourism and fisheries in a sustainable southeast economy. And that's why I've been pushing so hard to restore balanced management. So hopefully we'll have a good couple days uh, down in, in, in southeast, south southeast. Another challenge, where's Lyman Hoffman? Senator Hoffman is always on my case, what are you doing? What are you doing to reduce the cost of energy, particularly in rural Alaska? And we, we know that this is an effort that we must continue to address and address aggressively. We've been working through some strong partnerships. Uh, the Department of Energy has awarded, I just mentioned, a pretty large grant for microgrid technology to Cordova, which really can serve as a model across our state. And I hope you recognize I hope you recognize that when it comes to microgrids and the technology and the advancements that we are leading on, we're leading not only the country, we're leading the world. Others are looking to Alaska for that model. And so when I think about ingenuity and innovation, we're leading it here, folks. There's a lot to be proud of there. Uh, we also, of course, have, have the legislation that I have worked on over the past several years our energy bill, which includes federal financing for small projects uh, that would help facilitate some of the build out. This, this bill is now back on the Senate calendar. Um, later this, this spring, uh, early summer, I plan on hosting the Secretary of Energy, Secretary Perry, up here to the state to show him how Alaska is really this perfect proving ground for clean, new, reliable, uh, low-cost energy technology, so we're looking forward to that. So moving from the resource side of things, as I am traveling around the state, uh, health care, health care everywhere I go remains a priority. And here, too, we've made some progress, but also in this area, we know that we have our work cut out for us in many, many ways. Some of the things that we have done we deferred the 3% tax on health insurance plans that would have even further driven up premiums in our state, driven them up by more than $600 a year for the typical small group family plan. So we've pushed that off. We deferred the Cadillac tax that would have affected more than 60% of the plans here in the state, including those offered by the state, by our municipalities, our school districts uh, that, again, puts even further pressure on all of your operating budgets. So again, that is off the table for, for the short term here. We repealed the individual mandate that was, that was punishing. 
thousands of Alaskans who chose not to purchase insurance because they couldn't afford it. We extended the Children's Health Insurance Program, CHIP, for 10 years. So we got a full decade of, of certainty there for critical programs like Denali Kid Care. We passed a two-year funding uh, for the community health centers to keep these resources open and operating in our communities. And we also moved past the threats to Medicaid and Medicaid expansion, which have delivered coverage to more than 42,000 additional Alaskans. Now, I know when we, when we touch on Medicaid, um, you are grappling with a very real reality here in, in the legislature, $92 million uh, uh, in additional Medicaid costs. So uh, you know full well the challenges that we face there. And when, when we think about what is going on with healthcare, our, our real challenge, whether we are legislators, mayors, or, or, or businessmen, it is this relentless increase in, in health care costs. So we've been fighting over coverage. We've been arguing back and forth as to, as to the coverage itself. But we really have to focus on the cost of care. And we have to recognize that there is no simple fix for this. It's going to take a combination of policies at, at the local level, at the state level, and the federal level. And I, I have said that we need to come together as, as Alaskans to find Alaska solutions for us. We all say that we're just a little bit different up here, but the problem with us being different up here is the difference is as our costs are so much higher than any place else in the country. So again, how we come together with the solutions, it's, it's going to be us working together. We need policies that will help us leverage creative partnerships between our providers and our payers, streamline regulatory burdens, invest further in telemedicine, pioneer new delivery models, create transparency for costs, coordinate the care, and, and get the cost of prescription drugs, of course, under control. And we must, we absolutely must confront the substance abuse epidemic that is literally killing our fellow Alaskans, our communities, and our budgets. Everywhere I go in the state, I, I see the impact that addiction is having on, on our society. I don't care what the meeting is. I can be sitting and talking with teachers, or I can be talking with bankers, or I can be talking with fishermen. And it seems that every single conversation, whether I'm in Kenai or whether I'm back in Washington, DC, every conversation seems to come back to addiction. We've now directed additional federal resources to combat uh, opioid abuse. We'll be sending at least $6 billion more for enhanced state grants, public prevention programs, and law enforcement activities that are related to substance abuse abuse and mental health programs over the next couple years. But I think we all recognize that this is not just a matter of funding. Funding helps because treatment programs are expensive. We know we don't have the facilities and we don't have the mental health providers that we need. But it's more than just funding and it's, it's a challenge, quite honestly, that requires each of us as leaders, as leaders to stand with families families who have just been ripped apart, and help dispel the stigma that is associated with the disease of addiction. We have to acknowledge that addiction impacts all of us, and that it is our friends, it's our neighbors, it's our coworkers who are struggling, and we have to be there to support them. So there are multiple levels that we must we must uh, focus on. Now friends, I cannot, I cannot end my remarks here this morning without briefly addressing the sadness, the sorrow, and the real anger, the anger that is out there around the country after yet another mass shooting in our schools. I was here in this chamber 
almost 19 years ago, and I was sitting right over in this area, I can remember. I can remember the horror that I felt when I first learned of the assault on the students at Columbine. And it was a horror and a helplessness because my kids were back in Anchorage. And they were little guys at the time. But the helplessness as a mother, wondering whether or not my kids were safe in school, a place that should be that safe place for everybody. And since Columbine, what have we seen? We've seen a growing trend, a growing trend in mass shootings and greater violence in our country that is difficult to explain or to understand. And just as with the issue of addiction, there is no simple fix. We know that. We know that there's no simple, one easy answer for these acts of violence. But we do know, we do know that we are failing so many with mental illnesses. And how we answer their cries for help before they do harm must be part of our solution and our focus. We cannot have continued congressional impasse where we have a tragedy happen, we all express our condolences, we then lock into our political stances, and nothing is done until the next tragedy hits, and then we express our outrage all over again. We cannot become numb to the violence that is around us. And if the senseless death of children cannot bring us together to find solutions, I, I don't know what can. So as, as Alaskans, as Americans, we have to come together to confront the violence that is in our society today. So I am ready to work with all of you. I am ready to work with all of you on the challenges that we face and to, to nurture the opportunities that we are creating for tomorrow. So you thought I was going to forget those that have traveled with me today, but I want to introduce a few key members of my staff who helped me do this day in and day out, helping us work on, on these opportunities and, and these tough issues that we face. We've got Connie McKenzie, who so many of you know. Connie is my Juneau District representative. Uh, she's a good point of contact for my local office here. Next to her is Layla Kimbrell. Layla is from Soldatna, but she's now up in Anchorage acting as my state director and is doing a great job for me. Fish, on the end. <laughs> I would use his formal name, but I don't think you would recognize Mike Pulaski. Fish, of course, is my chief of staff, hails from Anchorage, but has spent many, many, many hours and days and years here in Juneau. Garrett Boyle is next to, to fish there. Garrett is from Uzinki and Seward, so we're getting some of our coastal communities there, but uh, Garrett is my legislative director, and he's also my lead on health care policy. 